What time is it? It's time for a new edition of Tech Talk coming at you from our studios in Zurich. I'm Ana Maria Montero, and this week we head over to Basel World 2019, where we check in with Peter Stas, president of Frédéric Constant. In 2018, the Geneva-based watch company revealed the world's first 3.0 watch called the Frédéric Constant Hybrid Manufacturer that fuses smart tech with mechanical movements. You wouldn't know just by looking at it, but it offers fitness and sleep tracking, an activity coach, world time, and analytics not only regarding the user, but also the watch itself, all via an app, of course. Now, how successful were they? And what are the next steps? We found out more in just a moment. But first, we tackle the overriding question at this year's fair. What keeps them coming to Basel World? We've been here for, uh, for 20 years, 25 years altogether. Um, for us, it's important to see our customers, to feel the trends. Uh, of course, there has been all this political upheaval with Basel. We've also not sometimes be too happy with fees or how everything went. But we feel this fair is still very important. Um, we, because it's, it's still the moment in the year that you present your new products, that you see everybody, that you get a lot of direct feedback, which otherwise you would not get. And we also still write a lot of orders as well here. Okay, so you do sell here. Absolutely. We have 26 rooms in this building here. And uh, they're uh, around the clock uh, every uh, hour, sometimes every half hour, really sales meetings with customers. The syncing of the dates for next year, of course, SIHH and Basel World closer together in April caused a bit of rumbling in the ranks, as I understand. How do you feel about it? Well, I, I think it's the fact that they're going to bring them together so that people have to fly over only one time, uh, I think it's very good. Uh, it's maybe part of the solution. Uh, we, we should remember that it all started about 15 years ago when the Richemont Group left Basel and started in Geneva. Uh, that was really when, I think, when the seeds were planted for things to go wrong. They wanted it to have it much more prestigious than Basel was. Basel started to do all kinds of things to become more prestigious as well. Probably went a little bit overboard with that. Okay, in what uh, sense? And now, well, this, this building where we stand here, too big, uh, probably too, too expensive as well. Okay. So, and, and we never asked for that, and I'm not sure many other brands asked for it either. We were happy at the time also when everything was a little bit smaller, less costly. So maybe combining the two together, and when the cost can come down, everybody coming together again, uh, also in the building instead of four or five buildings around in Basel of some of the brands that left but are here exhibiting at the same time, uh, that doesn't really make sense either. Mm -hmm. I spoke yesterday with Mr. Loris Melikov, the new managing director, and uh, he posed a few of these questions to him, including this cost per square meter, which I think you're referring to. Do you feel like he did enough in that direction? Um, uh, no. No. I think uh, still the cost that is associated with the, with the few days that we are here is disproportional. Um, and yeah, of course, it's logical also, they're asking it. Eh? If you put a huge building like this with, a, with an enormous price tag, there has to be some recovery. So I do understand it, but that doesn't mean that the strategy to put the building here was probably wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, such an, an, an interesting debate because you know, so many also other companies are doing their own events. You know, you've got, well, Swatch left altogether, but they're doing their own thing in Zurich. Breitling does this business summits. I mean, is that something that you would look at? Is that something that makes sense? You know, at one stage we looked at to try to have um, shows in, in the main cities, like one in Paris, one in Tokyo, one in Hong Kong, one in the U.S., or two in the U.S. But the problem is, especially with a relatively smaller company like we still are, uh, it would mean you have really a traveling circus around the world. And it will take a lot of time. Uh, now you concentrate everything in, in, in six days. It used to be eight days, but we were doing it in five to six days anyhow already. And you really are very efficient. We have about 1,200 meetings in those six days. So if you need to do that in individual cities, uh, you would make it easier for the local people, but you don't have this efficiency uh, anymore of everybody coming together. 
Sure, I guess the advantage is you're closer to the markets that way. Yes, it is. But if you would do it, for example, in Paris, will somebody from Austria come? Or will somebody from Germany come? So you would have to do it in Paris, you would have to do it in Germany, you would have to do it probably in the Benelux. And we do already organize some small events there. Uh, and then typically 30, 40 people come, not the 1,200 we see here. I see. Well, I, I was just, you did release some new watches already this year, but in Paris, at, I guess, a smaller event at the, uh, the Art Deco. Is that correct? Yes, but that was like what we call the pre-Basel introduction. So that's more like a line extension. Uh, here now in Basel, we really come uh, with a power reserve, which is a new caliber. And that will be officially introducing uh, at uh, 1230. Uh, that will be the, the, the real moment this new, this new model and this new caliber will be introduced. In 2018, you revealed the world's first mechanical smartwatch. Where are you with this? How, how successful have you been or not? Uh, yeah, so uh, maybe before we jump to the hybrid, we have been introducing uh, uh, horological smartwatches since 2015. Uh, so we really were one of the earliest, uh, if not the earliest uh, traditional watch brand to come with smartwatches. And, um, and over the years we've been growing that, uh, that category constantly with, uh, with about 20-25% per year. It now represents about 15% of uh, Frederic Constant uh, and uh, over 30% of Alpina. Uh, we've learned enormously from that uh, and, and expanding into new calibers. And the hybrid was one of the, uh, the calibers that was created upon customer request. We had a lot of customers in the earlier years that asked, can you also make a mechanical watch with these smart functionality? And uh, yeah, because some were literally wearing on one side a fitness band and on the other side uh, their traditional Swiss watch. So if you can combine the two, of course, you, you, you avoid this double wristing, which they called at one stage uh, a slang almost. Okay. So we integrated it into, in fact, this, uh, this watch I'm wearing here. So that's This last is also a smartwatch. Yeah, this is also a smartwatch. And uh, this is actually last year's version. Uh, but I'm still wearing it. We started to ship it in the summer and uh, positive reactions. Uh, and it also we see that having the electronic smartwatches and the mechanical smartwatches actually really expands the, the range and it has stimulated uh, also the growth of the, uh, of the electronic smartwatches. So, I mean, so how does that work? Do you, does it also connect to an app on your phone? Correct. So the watch is uh, having a sensor, so it's, it's tracking my activity, my sleep. Uh, I can read that also on the top layer. There's also a world timer, second time zone, uh, a workout timer, all the typical time functions are in there. And then it's connected to our app platform where we get much deeper overview, including insights. Uh, there we've made big steps as well. We have an AI engine running now on the insights. Uh, we had a, a, an expert team working on that who evaluated 1.2 billion health records and found 152 uh, correlations between activity, sleep and heart rate. And based on that, uh, our users get feedback on their, on their well-being. Fascinating. You said you, the, the smartwatch um, the smartwatch project for you started in 2015, more or less, and that's about when Citizen came into the picture, is that right? Um, yeah, Citizen approached us in 2015, and then we were uh, taken over in 2016, and uh, we announced this officially on the 26th of May in 2016. Those are certain dates you probably never forget anymore. <laughs> probably probably uh, not. <laughs> Was that, was that a good thing or a bad, a good no, day, that was, bad day? That was a good thing, of course. Okay. Uh, and that has en enabled us to, uh, yeah, to make, have a much broader platform, especially on the distribution side. Um, so, but I don't think they came for the smartwatches. They really came more for the mechanical calibers and to have uh, a group also in Switzerland. Um, and, and that's still the driver also for Frederic Constant, while the, the innovations on the smart side uh, are also very nice and, 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 and very interesting for the company and also very interesting for myself, as I, I, as I feel that this is really where the industry, at least part of the industry, a segment of the industry, will go to. 
what else has changed since Citizen came on board? Not much. Um, we have um, we have only one uh, Japanese uh, person in Geneva. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I have stepped back a little bit from the day-to-day -day operation, and it's the management team that takes care of it. But that was already foreseen even before uh, Citizen uh, came in the picture. Um, the company still run independently, really as separate brands for Frederic Constant, Alpina, and the Monaco, um, and. Basically, the real change has been uh, expansion of the distribution in the US, in the UK, in uh, Japan, for example, uh, and maybe some reporting procedures. Speaking of which, how is it looking for you in China? You guys are using JD.com, right? Yes, amongst others, Tmall, JD.com. Uh, yeah, going, going, going well, um, at the same time also not good enough. Okay. We would like to do much more there. What's uh, the issue? Chi China has always been the, the land of the Swatch Group. Swatch Group, of course, entered 15, 20 years ago. They're solidly implemented in China. Uh, they saw that and they did that very well. Um, so they are a very strong competitor uh, in the Chinese market. Their brand awareness is very strong. We are actually much stronger in Europe almost 40% of our sales is generated in Europe, where traditionally many of the traditional brands, Swiss brands, are not that strong. Okay. So is it, so is it on the agenda to foreign yes. or just focus on Europe? No, no, no. We also focus on China because that's also where Citizen comes in. They are very strong uh, in China as well, of course, in another segment, but they have very good relationships. They, they had at one stage also something like 250 of their own boutiques in uh, China. So they are really well implanted uh, there, and we make use of that. So in fact, um, uh, the Frederic Constant brand is now under their supervision uh, in China. How long do you stay as president? So um, I've been the president since 2016, after we've been taken over by, uh, by Citizen. And um, for the time being, uh, I will continue in this position. I mentioned before, we have a managing director now uh, for Frederic Constant, who's doing a very good job. Uh, younger generation, you have to groom them, and, uh, and sometimes they start to run faster than the, than the older uh, guard. Uh, so that go very, goes very well. But I still, and including Aletta also, um, uh, we have uh, an important function in, in, in determination of the strategy, the collection, and especially also in my case, uh, the innovations, uh, both on the mechanical and on the, on the smartwatch side. Okay, any idea where you want to go with that, just to wrap it up? Uh, yeah, I can say a few words about that. Um, so we are working very much on integrating uh, really high resolution color screens into the Alpiner X. We've seen there that uh, color touch screens to be able to have more interaction with the user is very important. So we work hard on that. On the other side, we're also integrating high accurate uh, heart read, uh, readings, measurements, uh, including AFib uh, uh, determination. Um, supposedly and clinically validated by the company we work with at a higher uh, level than Apple is doing. And then uh, we also very much work on this AI platform. Already we have these 152 uh, correlations, but we are building uh, and expanding on that uh, in, 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 a, in a hard way, investing uh, high, high amounts in that improvement of the technology. Basel World 2020? Yeah. yeah, for the time being we're fully signed up. And uh, like we discussed before, we hope we will be more together with everybody else. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Peter. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. However, in spite of the optimism expressed by Frédéric Constance Peter Stas, as well as the success of the smartwatch itself, reportedly selling out in markets around the world, not everyone thinks the Swiss watch industry's response was timely enough. The only thing what is a little bit disappointing for me is that the Swiss had no answer to the smartwatch. They should have much earlier taken care of and thought of how can we compete or how can we give an answer to those watches that will take away valuable place, places on the wrists of people? So I would have 
if I would have been the Swatch group, I would have had an answer much earlier, probably coming from the Swatch. They could have developed the Swatch to be a crazy smartwatch or whatever, and others could have done the same. And they are gently, you know, trying, Takoya has a smartwatch, it's not performing well, this brand has a little bit, Frédéric Constant Alpina has his concept, they all have a little concept, but it's not, it's not, for me it's not, it's not an answer. It's, it's, it's trying to be there where the others are, but you're not really there. It's like in the other way around if Apple would like to try to make mechanical wristwatches. It wouldn't work, I think. And now it's us that are out of time. Remember, you can find this segment along with any of our previous Tech Talks on cnnmoney.ch under thematic shows, Tech Talk. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.